Hey, everybody, and welcome to the One Million Cent Podcast. My name is Ryan Fontenot, and I'm your host for today, as I am excited to continue to hopefully encourage you, equip you, and help you get passionate about telling your world about Jesus. We have a very simple, or or might, maybe I should say not so simple goal. We have a God-sized goal of one million cent, and that is to train one million teens around the globe to share the gospel. So maybe you're a leader watching. We hope that this will stir you up to equip the teens in your life. Maybe you're a teen watching, and you want to tell people about Jesus, but you don't know how. This is why we exist, to help you figure out how to have those everyday Jesus conversations in your world, where you are, with who you know. And today, I have an incredible friend of mine who is going to join me and actually going to give us some incredible feedback and advice on how to make that happen. I want you all right now to welcome my good friend, Mitch Tidwell. Mitch, how's it going, bro? Good. How are you, Ryan? Man, I am doing good, doing good. Excited to be on here today with you. Thanks for <clears throat> taking time and making time. I know, uh, man, you have a crazy schedule. And so um, before we get started, man, why don't you tell a little bit about where you are and what you do right now? Yeah, man. Uh, well, Ron, thanks for having me on. It's uh, really an honor. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Ryan was a, a friend, a pastor, and now a friend. Um, and so I was really grateful for Ryan and, uh, really grateful for you, man, the ministry you're doing. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, about me, I was first, you know, came out of high school in the college age years and was in business and restaurant business and, um, and did that for a little bit, realized that, Hey, this was cool. I was able to make some money and do pretty well for myself early in that business with my family and, but felt uh, pretty purposeless and so um and not not purposeless but just like felt like there was more in life and that led me to this journey of just exploring my worldview and coming to faith in jesus at the age of 23 and uh shortly after that getting in this um role of, of resourcing churches particularly in the area of evangelism and, and reaching people and so now uh, i work for the southern baptist of texas convention and i'm our collegiate associate and um uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks i'll be in seven years and been with the, the organization for 11, but in this role for about seven, just helping churches think through how to reach, develop, and send college students. And um, and then a, a majority of that, too, I also helped, as you know, Garrett Wagner, who's uh, our major, wasn't part of Red Cheese. Yep. Um, he, uh, I worked with him for seven of those years, helping put on student camps and trying to mobilize students to share their faith. And so um, that's, that's a little bit about me. I've got a wife, Olivia, two boys, William and Harrison, who are under, William's about to turn three, Harrison just turned one. And so... That's a prayer request, and uh, man, we love it. It's a great time. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, Mitch and I have known each other long enough now. I knew him before Olivia, before. <laughs> so, so uh, man, uh, it's been a blast. To see you God has just poured his favor um, on you the last few years. Man, and even throughout your life, the, the first time we served at camp together, um, oh. man, I, I could just tell, man, this guy is for real. He loves Jesus. And uh, so I'm so thankful for your ministry, specifically in the area of college. Now, I spend a lot of time with high school and junior high kids, but mm -hmm. uh, do hit some college age as well. And mm -hmm. your ministry is kind of aimed at college. We'll jump into that here in a little yep. bit more. But, man, thanks again for being on here. So I want to start out, man, with a little bit of rapid fire questions, okay? Uh, yeah. I want to I warm you up a little bit. People want to know who you are, all that kind of stuff. But there's these are some serious questions, man. So I hope you're ready. Number one, uh, Mitch Tidwell, are you a coffee guy or an energy drink guy? Now, I know the answer to this. <laughs> yeah, 1,000% coffee. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead and show them your cup. He's already got it out, man. Yes, this is my this is my Haslett Texas cup, brother. Oh, come on, man. There you go. Man. Who's got that, oh. man? That's a hey, not many people. That's the first yeah, I've seen. Yeah, so, yeah. Hundred percent coffee guy. I knew I knew that without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So so that that begs the next question: Are mm -hmm. you now because you are married with kids now? Are you a yep. morning, midday, or night owl man? What what what's your preference? Uh, morning. I am my my peak brain hours are from like it's it's dumb and and I wish it wasn't this way, but it is from like four a.m. to about eleven a.m. After eleven a.m., you're getting you're getting uh, uh, 
mid energy for me after 11 a.m. <laughs> I love it. I love that, man. Yeah. I'm glad I have you. We're recording now about 9 a.m. Central. Yeah. So I've I got him in the good zone right now. That's right. I love it. So we're, we're getting Mitch at his best. This is amazing. That's right. So, hey, man. So I know you get to travel some as you go to collegiate mm-hmm. events and stuff like that. Uh, but personally, man, if you're traveling, do you prefer to drive? Or are you like, man, I want to see the scenery and take the journey? Or are you like a fly guy? Like, let's just get there. I want to get to the destination. Mm. Dude, that's I'm in the middle of a change right now. I've right. always yeah. been fly, and then I don't know if it's getting older or what, but I'm like, I, I think I'd rather drive. I think I'd rather there drive. You. There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, if you had to drive and you were to pick a destination, would you prefer a beach destination or a mountain destination? Mountain. Mountain. All right, yeah. man. I love it. I, yep. I would have guessed that. Uh <laughs> Mitch is the uh, extroverted introvert, so he likes his alone time. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would have picked Mountain probably. Hey, it's, I, I call it a high functioning introvert. That's what I call it. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't know it. I've yeah. been around him enough to know it now. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, well, speaking of, you know, just who you are, what's your preference in dessert, man? Are you more of a pie guy? Is there a pie or a cake that you prefer, man? Um, to, You know, it. it if it's like a nothing but cake, then yeah. I'm all in, you know. You better hush. Come on. But if someone's just making a random cake, I'm probably going pie. So let, let's just do pie in general pie. Okay. I like that. I like that. So, it's, that's fair, man. Well, let's maybe get a little bit more spiritual when it comes to the fight. <laughs> now, I asked this question and everybody's like the whole thing. I know. Yeah. I know. I know the yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. if you had a Old Testament <laughs> or New Testament, man, what, what, what kind of is your like go-to? You know, I, I like Old Testament just because I really love narratives. And I feel like in the Old Testament, you're just getting, it's so raw and real. I just, it's just very relatable for me, especially, you know, even in the Psalms with David and some of his rawness and emotions, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I tell people, look, if you want it, you want to know if God can handle your honesty, just read the Psalms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I love it. Well, well, so well, let's just think about the New Testament for a second. There are four sure. Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I don't know why I mm-hmm. told you that, because you do know it, but for our listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, so out of the four, people kind of lean toward one as kind of their yeah. preferred writer. Is there there one that you prefer out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Yeah, I love uh, John is probably um, my most favorite. And I think the reason is, is John just, you just see Jesus, these continual interactions with everyday people of society and how Jesus would interact with them. And it's, for me, it's been such a testimony of how do I interact with, with everyday people of society? Because Jesus shows us that, or John shows us that in that side of Jesus and John. Yeah, man. I love that, that perspective there, you know, and, uh, that's yep. good. You can't, you can't ever go wrong with John. I mean, yeah. John, <laughs> down. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, Hey, I, you know, I know you're, you've done some personality stuff and everything. I always feel like we could probably tell a lot about someone's personality by which gospel they like. Are they a Matthew guy? You know, they like the genealogies and all that stuff. But they, <laughs> they want that. They want all the historical information yeah. and research. Are they, they, yeah. I like Mark. I'm like, Mark, like, get to the point. Just tell me. Yeah. Tell me what happened. <laughs> Dude, I, that was when I saw that question, it was a toss up between John and Mark. John kind of won yeah. out. But yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, I, those would be my top two as well. So that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, I'm going to ask you one more question before we jump into uh, the yeah. real stuff here. But now I don't want you to answer this one right now. I want you to hang on to that answer till the end. Uh, we'll come back and that'll be the cliffhanger. And that is this. Is Mitch Tidwell, is he a dog guy or a cat guy? Don't tell us yet. Is he a dog guy or a cat guy? <laughs> By the way, if, if you're listening right now and you have a good guess, why don't you go ahead and drop it? If you're able to drop comments, say, drop it in the comments. Let us know. What do you think? Is Mitch Mitch the dog guy or is he a cat guy? We'll, we'll find out soon. But, uh, I have a strong opinion on that, and I'll save it. It's okay. I let, you know, it's funny. <laughs> Most people do. Most people do. So, well... Well, I know that you're serving with SBTC as the Collegiate mm-hmm. Associate, and uh, man, you work with college ministries all around the state of Texas. So, tell us a little bit more about that. What what's can, give us a snapshot yeah. of mm-hmm. Mitch Tidwell's week, mm-hmm. month, year, whatever. You got it, man. Um, and before I get going, I've realized if you're watching this live, I think this picture behind me is crooked. Uh, and if you can, <laughs> for some of you out there that are just real anal about that, I'm sorry, I can't fix it right now, but 
I just want to acknowledge that so you can finish watching this video and not be too caught up how crooked that is. So I just noticed that. That's amazing. Uh, That's amazing. So um, uh, and the, the reason why I want to point that out is because, Ryan, I heard about half of your question because I just noticed that. So tell me that question one more time. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty, man. That's amazing. This is what I love about Mitch. So you work at the Collegiate Associate yeah. for SBTC. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give people kind of a snapshot of mm -hmm. what that even looks like? Some people are going, he does what? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, you know, um, traditionally in, in Southern Baptist life, a lot of the college ministry, the way that we resource churches and college ministry has th been through Baptist student unions, Baptist collegiate ministries that are on campus. Uh, in Texas, we have two state conventions, and so uh, the the other one does uh, the VDCT. They do that, and I do local church college ministry, where I just resource them. And so, really, the the whole thing is we want to do is is really help uh, one strengthen new churches, but also start new churches with this emphasis on college students. And so, we're thinking through three categories: how do we help churches um, uh, reach students with the gospel, see students saved? How do we develop them? Uh, into disciple makers, and then three, how are we intentionally sending them into strategic kingdom places? And uh, and so that's the big thing that we're doing. The, the more kind of um, nuanced kind of strategic focus we have is that we want to start new churches. We want to plant new churches in college towns and have a high emphasis on reaching students because we believe just like, uh, you know, most, most in youth ministry is that, man, this is a very strategic generation. If we can capture their worldview, give them a like gospel, biblical worldview, then that will change the trajectory of their life and change the trajectory of our nation and of our world. And so that's the kind of the big broad vision of what we do. And that, that looks through, we do events, equipping events. We, I do coaching and consulting um, and just different things like that to help each church. Um, you know, it's kind of like a church comes to me and they say, hey, we need help with this. And it's, and so I just try to adapt and be whatever I can to help them succeed. That's good, man. I, I love that because there's a lot of churches trying to figure out college ministry, right? Because yep. we know yep. the drop off from graduation into college really is a pretty steep drop off, or at least it yep. can be. But yeah. we also know that churches that do that well, plan for that well, strategize well, are intentional about reaching college students. Man, they see a, what, what I can tell, man, their, their drop off is not near as much if they're more yeah. intentional about that. Have you found that to be true as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, I always say it's like the, um, it's bridging the gap, you know, and I think this goes for any ministry in the church when you have you know, if, if there's never a connection from children's ministry to youth ministry, a student's going to feel weird going into that youth ministry. And same thing for a high school, middle school to high school, high school to college. We got to make sure that those transitions are really well. So I always tell churches, like, if you if you have a college ministry in your church and you have a youth ministry, that college ministry probably needs to, that minister probably needs to get involved in those seniors. So whether that's teaching a small group with seniors, whether that's going to do stuff with denials of seniors or summer camps, need to do something so there's a bridge that's easier to cross. And, you know, I think too with, you know, if you're a youth pastor out there, it's like, hey, if I know that my students are going to these places and they're going to these schools, what can I do to help bridge that gap with the churches that are already there? How can I create some connections there? And then also for the churches in the college towns that are receiving students, what can you do to reach out to those churches to create a better bridge for students to onboard into your ministry once they go to college? Because Honestly, Ryan, you have, when a student goes to college, there's about a two week window that you have to capture them. And after about two to maybe three weeks, they're kind of already getting embedded into their friend groups and what they're going to do. And if churches don't capture them that quickly, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, 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 you could lose them, you know, and they may, they may kind of wander off and then post college realize, okay, I need to be grounded back in my faith again. So, right. Dude, that's so good. I think, you know, it, it, the statement that came to mind as you were you were talking there was like, hey, you're not going to reach college students by accident, right? Mm -hmm. it, no. They're mm -hmm. not just going to stumble into your church. And so the mom and dad are bringing her. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mom's not saying, get up, let's go to church. And yeah. so yeah. you've got to be intentional about that. And so, uh, man, let's just let's just uh, kind of kick off that for just a second, because I, I want I don't want to I don't want to leave that thought. If there's somebody listening here, they're a pastor, they're a leader, they're a, they're a next gen, you know, pastor or they're a lead pastor um, and they're going, man, how or maybe even just a volunteer going, I have a passion for college students. We're not reaching anyone to 
what is maybe one good step that you would say, hey, what is a good step to say, hey, if you want to start reaching college students, here is a good step to start taking to connect with them and uh, reach out to them? Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, depending on where the church is at, where that leader's at, there's yeah. a couple of different ways that you could go about it. You know, if you initially, like, let's just say you're in the church, you've been tasked with reaching college students. There's not a single college student in your ministry or in your church, but they are locally. It's then just begin to, um, one, uh, it's just begin with prayer of like, okay, Lord, prepare me, give me the eyes to see this. Let me think about students. Let me, uh, you know, you know, would you just spirit, would you lead me in this? Uh, you know, keep that on the forefront of your heart and be spirit led by it. But then begin to map out where are students at? Are they at the coffee shop? Are they on campus? Are they, <clears throat> and by the way, if you want, if you're going to start praying, um, it would be great just to go do your prayer walks on campus. And that would really develop yeah. a heart for students. Wow. And it'll create some, you can kind of create some intersections with students Yeah, by doing that. So just start putting yourself in the places where students are at, and then just figure out ways that you can just begin to get to know them or to uh, get to know them or, or, or meet them. And, you know, for some that may seem weird. And so I'd also say like, if you're at a school, I would go to even that administration of that school and say, Hey, what would be something our church could do that would be a benefit to this school and begin to start blessing the school? Because once you start blessing the school, not only do you make that a better place and that school's going to be welcoming of you, but you're also going to be able to create some interaction with students and help students. So, you know, um, particularly if you're at a college or university that has um, on-campus housing, show, talk to the university, show up and say, hey, we're just here to help students move in. Um, that's a great way to meet students because you're meeting their need. You say, hey, on Sunday, come to our church. We'd love to have you. Or we're going to do a midweek study. We'd love to have you. You know, something like that. So don't, you know, think of those ways that you can bless the campus and bless students. And that's probably going to be your doorway to begin to meet students and, and really create a great reputation with that campus. I love that, man. So, so much practical greatness there, man. I was thinking like when you're talking about just be around where college students are, I, I got the picture of fishing, right? You're not going to catch fish if you're not fishing where the fish are. <laughs> so yeah. you got to be where they are, right? If you're, yeah. if you're casting your line into a swimming pool where there are no fish, doesn't matter how long you do it. <laughs> yeah. As a fish. Right? Not going to happen. Uh, yeah. I, I love that, man. That's, that's a great, uh, great, great reminder there. Just be around, find practical ways to connect. I love the idea of talking to the college saying, hey, how can we help? Move in day, massive blessing, right? So, yeah. Oh, man, so such good stuff. And by the way, if you are um, passionate or uh, trying to figure out how to grow or start your college ministry, uh, we're going to drop Mitch's information in the show notes. So make sure you reach out to him. I, I know his heart. I know his passion to uh, help you succeed, help you win in that area. And what he shared right here is just a little bit of probably things y'all could dream up together of where you are. So uh, make sure you do that. Um, well, well, Mitch, I know I know that you have this, man, you, you just seem to have this uh, passion, this, this desire. I've watched you work with college students. I've seen your ministry. Um, tell me, where does that come from? Is, is, is it just a, a personal burden or because yeah. you met Jesus at 23 or, mm -hmm. or where does that come from, man? Why are you so passionate about students, collegiate ministry, stuff like that? Man, uh, it's in the, in my way, I just fell into it, you know, at 23, you know, came to faith, yeah, building my worldview. Um, I was working here at the SVTC. I was an intern then I became an assistant to a guy named Lance Kroll. And this role for a college, you know, to lead the college work at our, in our organization came open and he told me, he said, Hey, you ought to apply for that. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense. Cause I have no background in that. Like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. And, uh, he said, you don't know, you know, and he told me this and he said, Mitch, you don't need to ha be the expert. You just need to serve churches really well. That's and right. I was like, and that, that really changed my whole paradigm of being in this kind of nonprofit resource seat for churches. It's like, you know, you, you don't always have to be the expert. You just need to love and serve churches and, and you can be a benefit to them. And so 
I got into this seat and so happens the first time, my first day on the job, um, you know, I interviewed all that, got the job, didn't really know what I was doing. It's just one of those moments where I'm like, Lord, you got to show up or this ain't going to work. And my first day on the job was probably probably one of the foremost experts on collegiate ministry in Baptist life, which is Brian Fry. And that guy just kind of took me under under his wing and discipled me and really showed me and gave me a vision of what could, this could be and what where what the potential of college students. And uh, and man, that just really gripped me was the thought that hey, this is that this is like you know Meg Jay says in her book Defining Decade that the that the the brain stops, you know, it's 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 done growing at twenty fives, you know, that's when it's kind of formed, and so this is this this college student years, this is that last, this is like their last time to not be like concreted into life, you know, yeah. they their learning worldview, they can go anywhere, they can do anything. There's there's a world of possibilities, and this is that last time to shape them before they launch out. And so, and it's also a unique time because they're, you're kind of coming out from mom and dad's network, you know, over, you know, umbrella a little bit, they can make their own decisions. Um, and they're, they're very moldable and shapeable. And what happens in those years, again, will last 10, 20, 30, 30 years of their life. It shapes who they, what they think about God, what they think about the world, what they think about them. And so, you know, that vision that he gave me was like, hey, Mitch, if we can reach this generation, it's literally world changing um, for years and years to come. And so yeah. when, when he said that, I just thought to myself, like, I'm all in here. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm all in here because I think this is this is the biggest bang for every kingdom dollar is spent right here, um, because I think we can really massively change the direction of the world by reaching this generation of students, uh, this generation of, of people. And so that's how I got a burden for it. And so when I share about it, it's like, you know, college ministry, you know, sometimes people look at the generational ministries and they seem like stepping stones to go be, you know, a big boy pastor. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ryan, you were youth and then pastor, and then you came back to you. So you kind of went up and you're like, you came back. But for like me and like for you, it's like, no, I, we just see the strategicness of the generation. It's worth yeah. investing your whole life into. So it's not just, this is like, seems like a cool ministry or this is like, I'm waiting on the next thing. It's like, no, I'm all in here because I think if we're going to change the world, this is the place to do it. And so, yeah. I mean, you know, I say this now, God can do anything he wants, but I'm, I'm a lifer. You know, I, I, right. Right. I, I want to invest in what's going to return. And I think this is the biggest return on investment. Yeah, I love that, man. I think all of that is, ah, I hope y'all hear that, man. I hope you hear his passion. I hope you hear that. And he, here's what I love about your story, Mitch. You know, there are people like me, the day I was saved, God called me to ministry. And I just knew, I was like, man, I'm on, I'm, I am have a passion for students, right? I was saved at 18. I don't know if that had a lot to do with that. A youth pastor was influential in my life. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but I was like, man, I knew, right? But I love that you said, hey, you know what? I just was like obedient where I was and listened to the trusted voices in my life around me. And God used that obedience to take me to the next step. It wasn't like you had this vision. I'm going to be the collegiate associate for the whole state of Texas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But God put you in that seat, I think, because of your, your just your daily faithfulness, you know, and um and so anybody listening, I just want to encourage you. You may be like, man, I wish I just knew what God wants. Sometimes you don't, and you're just walking in daily faithfulness, right? I, I think mm -hmm. Mitch and I both can attest. There are days we wake up like, I don't know, man. I'm just yeah. going to be faithful today. And um, and God is faithful, and he leads us and directs us. And uh, mm -hmm. so, man, thanks for sharing that, because I know yeah. there's some people out there who are feeling this tug to ministry, are feeling this like, man, what's next in my life? And I think sometimes that can become paralyzing and we get so focused on the five, 10 years down the road that we forget to be faithful today, right? Man, it's a good word, man. Yeah, it's just daily faithfulness for sure. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, well, man, I know that you guys resource collegiates and I know you've trained a ton of people in evangelism and sharing the gospel. And that's what this podcast is really all about. It's to help stir up this heart for evangelism to help people uh, figure out, man, how do I tell people about Jesus? But I also know there's a lot of people who want to tell about Jesus. They want to share, but they have this fear inside of them and they don't know how to start. 
if somebody came to you, college student, and they said, hey, Mitch, I, man, I want to I want to live for Jesus on campus. I want to tell my friends about Jesus. I want to make a difference while I'm here. Uh, but but what what should I do, man? How do I even get started doing that? What would kind of be some advice you would give a collegiate student who would say, man, I want to start sharing the gospel. I want to be be a witness on my campus, but I don't even know where to start. What yeah. would you tell them? Well, one, I affirm the mess out of them and just say, man, I'm so, man, praise God that God has put that passion in your heart and whatever I can do to stoke that flame, I, I definitely want to do. And, you know, I always think about any, any time there's like a, that development question of like, hey, I want to do this and I want to develop into this. Uh, Mac Lake has a, a pretty cool thing that, that is helpful that I use is, is the trite of development. What's the knowledge you need to do it? So you need to know how to share the gospel. So what are we going to do? You know, is there a method or is there something we want to get to just become fluent in the gospel and knowing it and knowing how to verbalize it and share it? Uh, the second thing is coaching. You know, someone, you know, if well, they're coming to me, then I'm probably playing that role of like, hey, I want to coach you through this. I want to help you learn. Yeah. I want to coach you up in it. But that third thing is experience. You just got to get out and do it. Uh, you know, like, hey, let's, you know, I know that seems... And here's the thing with sharing the gospel. It is always the the thinking about it is always scarier than actually doing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it's yeah, man. That's so yeah. Good. That's yeah. So good. yeah, that thinking that about the, it is as scarier than the doing. It. Yeah, oh, it is, man. Yeah. And it's like once you get out there and you do it, you're like, oh, this is this ain't so this is not so bad. You know, and there may be some times where you feel embarrassed or you feel like it doesn't go well, but you know, part of that is, is learning how to get over yourself and, you know, and still learning how to just get back up again. And, yeah. and so those three things like knowledge, what do you need to learn? You know, like what's, what, what kind of, uh, learn the gospel, become fluid in it. Who's going to be your coach to hold you accountable and the experience to do it. And so, I mean, it's kind of like, I always feel it's like what Jesus did. He taught his disciples. He let them go out and do it. Then out the 72 and they come back and he coaches them up on it. And, um, so I think those, if you can get those three things going on in your life, I think you can really develop, um, that and, and make that a habit and a practice. That's good. I love that, man. So number one, figure out a way to share the gospel. I love that. You've got to know how to share the gospel. There's a thousand ways to do it. I say a thousand, there may not be a thousand, but there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of ways to do it. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and, and, and if you're listening here and you're trying to find a way uh, we have a way that we train people at one million cents.com. Go check yep. that out. It's absolutely free. I know that uh, SPTC has tons of resources. NAM has tons of resources. Uh, if if you don't even know where to start, just get on the Googles, right? And mm -hmm. say, how do I share the gospel? And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you're going to see all kinds of ways. And so go check it. So no way. Man, get a coach, get someone in your life that'll mm -hmm. stoke those fires and continue yeah. to. And then that last part is it, man. Um, I always say this, man, information really doesn't bring transformation. It's mm -hmm. activation of that yep. information that brings yep. transformation. And so yep. get out and do it. And I, I love yep. that, man. That That's so good. I think that's good for adults that are watching, mm -hmm. uh, teens mm -hmm. that are watching everyone. All of us, man, just get out and do it. Let's just stop seminaring about it. Anyway, anyway, man, so that's awesome. Well, I know in your... um. In your ministry life, man, you've you've seen it when a student or a co college student like gets it right. They're like, mm -hmm. you, you've seen it. The lights come on. They move yeah. from, hey, man, I know I ought to be doing this to doing this. And I just wonder, man, one of the things that we want to do is we want to inspire people. I think stories help stir up those mm -hmm. buyers. Is there a story that comes to mind where you just saw a student get it, man? They're like, hey, I want to do this. I need to start living on mission. And they started and man, God just mm -hmm. used them greatly. Uh, if, if you have a story like that, man, could you share one with us? Yeah. You know, I think I've got several of those and I'm, I'm thinking about the one and I, I may, I'm going to try not to get emotional about this one, but someone really close to me that was, you know, in their high school years battling a, a simple lifestyle and, uh, you know, we just, is it's kind of soul crushing a little bit. You're like, you know, as you as you watch them walk in that way, um, but you still love them. And then, you know, for them to come to you one day and, and say, "I've just decided I love Jesus more than I love sin," and and so I'm I'm chasing after Him now. And 
you know, there's nothing I could do with that. You know, that's just a pure Holy Spirit thing of like, <laughs> dang, man, like yeah. you were, you were going the, you know, it's the broad road and it's the narrow road. You know, it's like you were, you were walking the broad road and you were going yeah. with the grain of society, which is easy. Yeah. And you, a young person are going to actually go against the grain of society that will cost you tremendously because you love Jesus more than you love that. Like, dang, man, like, that's awesome. I mean, you talk about true transformation is when you have a young person that genuinely wants to go against the grain because they love Jesus so much. And, uh, and then you see them start walking in obedience and being a faithful witness now in their college campus, persons on their college campus. And, um, you know, just to see them, you know, being on mission, you know, with students there and, um, reaching out with international students and helping lead people. Like, it's like, man, like, dude, that's, that's amazing, man. Like that's just true Holy spirit. And so I think, you know, that's one example of just, just repentance of like being willing to say, you know, Hey, it's so easy to go with the grain of society, but I'm, I'm going to go against it. And I'm, cause I love Jesus more than I love that. That was powerful. And then, you know, I've seen several, you know, young people, come into college and they spend their freshman year and they dive into just everything college has to offer, which is, you know, as far as the party scene, which, you know, leaves them at the end of that feeling. I just feel like I got used. I feel like I'm empty. And to see them say, I think there's something else out there. And I'm thinking of even one guy uh, right now, he's a TCU student and he, you know, came to college, dove into that his first year and came to faith in Christ. And man, really just started being faithful witness to share the gospel on the campus. So all, just through him and his buddies, we saw several people saved in that ministry. And then, and then now he's serving in the residency at the church at our, the church that we're at. And he's planning on, got his eyes on overseas mission, you know, like, <laughs> you know, this guy four years ago, that's not even close to being on his radar, yeah, but he just continues to, to, to lean into Jesus and say, man, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And, and he's not, He's not, again, it goes like, he, he's like, I'm not worried about where this world is going here. I'm just worried about where is Jesus going and I want to follow him. <laughs> um, yeah. Just powerful stuff, yeah. man. That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing those because I know people listen, they've either, either been there, maybe some of them are right in the middle of it or, or you know, they'll, they'll mm-hmm. get in there and, and they're going to try this stuff and find out it's empty and. Yeah. And when you when you just go, Jesus, and here I am, I'm yours, right? Here I am, send me. It, it changes yep. everything. So. It does. Well, man, man, bro, it's it's always incredible to uh, catch up and hang out and talk. Uh, man, I'm thankful we got a chance to do this today. Uh, yeah. But before we jump off, I want to I want to. How can people connect with you? What's the best way for people to connect with you? We'll drop it in the show notes as well. But yeah. for people listening, man, how, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, just personally, just Instagram and Twitter at Mitch Tidwell. Um, if you like, just off the cuff, just really emotional Dallas Cowboy posts. You can follow me on Facebook. You probably don't want to do that. <laughs> so go Cowboys. <laughs> so I, I keep a lot of my Cowboys passion off of that. So Instagram at Mitch Tidwell, Twitter at Mitch Tidwell. Um, those are the best ways to follow me. My website Tidwell dot com, and then for our collegiate, the things we do across the state that is at SBTC Collegiate. Um, we're on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, and um, uh, and TikTok, and also YouTube. So we have about, on YouTube, we have about 135, I think, resource videos to equip church, help equip churches on how to reach, develop, and send college students. So you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. That's where we're trying to put push a lot of our resources yeah. through YouTube. So. So check that out. And we'll drop all those in the show notes as well, but I wanted y'all to hear it from him. And uh, Mitch, before we jump off, man, we got to circle back around to this question, right? I got to know, man, because I'm curious. I don't Now, this is one thing I don't know about you. I have a guess, but I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Mitch Tidwell a dog guy or a cat guy? Let the world know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a dog guy. The big reason <laughs> is I'm allergic to cats. And if I'm in a, if I'm in a house with cats, my whole face will swell up. And so I can't do it, man. I can't do it. <laughs> so I'm a dog guy. And that's, that's the best reason I've ever heard, right? There. Exactly. I've, heard, I've heard of that, man. That's awesome. I, that's awesome. You know what? I, I have, probably have some stronger opinions on that, but I don't want to lose any audience numbers. 
Yeah, I said, oh, don't worry. We've already lost it for some other comments for people, but I appreciate you uh, keeping yeah. for the family, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, everybody, I just want to stop and say thank you all for tuning in today. I hope it was an encouragement to you. And let me just always remind you, if during this podcast at any point there was something that you thought, man, I wish so-and-so would hear this, hey, just share it out to them. Hit that share button. Let them know it's out there because I promise you when that kind of stuff happens in your mind and in your heart, that's not you. That's the Lord. So share it out. You never know what a blessing it'll be to others. Don't forget, comment, like, subscribe. You know all the deal because it helps us continue to train, equip, and reach a million students around the globe to share the gospel. So thanks for tuning in. I can't wait for next time. Until then, don't forget this. Today is a great day to tell someone about Jesus. So let's go.